casting it for your next level for what is written. What is written is written, but a man had to sign it. But in your destiny, there is a man God put that will execute it. I came as that man. Take your Bible. I want to show you something in a few minutes. We'll pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just want to show you in a few minutes, it's a new series I'm going to be teaching on by the revelation of what God has shown me to deal with. I mean somebody. Amen. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 from verse number 3, very quickly, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. For though we work in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Number four. For the weapon, weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ to the obedience of Christ the Lord bless the reading of his word yeah. let me hear a big and a better hear yeah. please be seated amen amen I want to speak to you on this very important the demonic landlord and its tenant. But it's beyond what you know. When we say this, it's purely spiritual. That's why I started by the way of introduction, reading that scripture to you so you can understand what we're dealing with. He said, though we dwell in the flesh, we do not war by the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but the mighty true God to the pulling down of stronghold. Uh, by, before I continue, by way of introduction, I'm sure everyone here understand who a landlord is and who a tenant is. Yes, sir. Now, usually, a tenant, I mean a landlord, is the owner of a property, either a building, either the person bought the building or the person bought the land, uh, you know, built on it, or by the way of hereditary, the person inherited it from either his father or something. So that person is the landlord. The tenant is the one that they let or lease that house to. Either for the person to live by way of accommodation where the person will live or where you have your business, your offices or something. That's what it is. But understand, in this, con in this context, by the reason of what God has revealed to me, uh, it's very, very serious. We are dealing with spiritual landlords and tenants. Now, the landlord is the one that has right to come to his property anytime. Whether you are a tenant, being a tenant does not stop the, does not make you the owner. The owner of the property is the landlord. And this gives the landlord power of ownership. Somebody say power of ownership. Power of ownership. And this also gives the landlord the power of attorney. This also gives the landlord the power of access. Now, the power of ownership is what, uh, I mean, it's a sense of owning a thing that this thing belongs to you, that you are the owner. Then, because you are the owner, because the power of ownership is what grants the power of attorney, legally speaking. And the power of attorney brings to brings to bear the power of access. What you own, you access. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, sir. What you own, 
you access. You can't access what you don't own, except you are a thief. You assess what you own. You assess what belongs to you. Now, in this matter, so even if a, la if a tenant rents a house, even though, even if the house is a, 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 I mean, a, a, a full compound and it's only the tenant living there, the landlord can come in there anytime and knock and say, I want to see my compound. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, Papa. You're not going to say because you are a tenant, you will, you will block the landlord from not entering. The landlord can enter. The landlord can access. The landlord can also decide to give you a quit notice. The landlord can quit you out of the house. And the landlord can say, I no longer want you in this house. And at the same time, the landlord also has the power to increase the rent. Yes, sir. Now, some of you, you are under the power of spiritual landlords. Mm. Spiritual mm. landlords. The Bible said, why men slept? The enemy came to sow tires. A tenant does not plant flower. It is the owner that plants flower. Yes, sir. Is it making sense now? Yes, Papa. A tenant... You can't go to somebody's house and begin to plant flower. Meanwhile, you are a tenant. It's the landlord that decides what he plants in his house. And whether you like what he plants in his house or not, is not your concern. He's the owner of the house. He decides what comes. Who is the landlord that claims ownership of your house? Oh. The Bible said that our body, the Bible calls our body temple. It said your body is a temple. Now, in this temple, it depends on who owns the temple at the point in time. Yes, sir. They say your temple is the temple of God. But sometimes by the reason of, of trespasses, by the reason of, of, of demonic characters, by the reason of demonic uh, transactions, a landlord can be handed over. So when I say who is a spiritual landlord and who is a spiritual tenant, now this is the area where the enemy have power and have right over God's people and over God's children because the Bible said my people perish for the lack of knowledge, not because the devil is powerful. I'm trying to raise a little foundation then I will say some very serious things in a few minutes then as we begin to pray. But watch this. So now I've tried to you know, show you physically, uh, I try to maintain it, a landlord and a tenant. Now, the same vein. Now, what makes somebody a landlord? I said, either he buys the house, builds the house, amen? Are you aware that not everybody that is a, everyone that, who is a landlord today uh, know how much they sell a bag of cement? Some of them inherited it by way of hereditary. Uh, sometimes I, I, I think the Igbos, they don't believe too much in inheriting their father's properties. Except the kind of, uh, maybe we are seeing, maybe except we are having lazy ones today. Because those days, from what I know, if your father raised you, you go to, you try, your, once your father send you to school or something, he has trained you, you go to look for yourself. Sometimes you don't even have that opportunity for you to be trained you know, through school. Now, watch this. So there are people that are landlord, they did not buy the land, they did not build the house, they inherited it. Right? Yes. Now, there are people also who became landlords by hereditary. There are people also who became tenant by hereditary. You know somebody, you can be living in a house and because you know those days, especially in Lagos, where they, where they say you got to pay two years, right? And when you pay two years, you have to pay agent. You have to pay agreement. You have to pay caution fee and different fees. Yes, sir. And before you know what is going on, the money is so much. So maybe you have a friend who, is, who, 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 who just finished building a house. The friend will not tell the landlord I'm living, right? Yes, sir. The friend can say, okay, you come to my house. 
we will continue to make you continue to make the payment. Is anybody getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So that means why your friend is trying to you are trying to make your friend help you so that you will not go to get a new house where you have to pay for two years where you have to pay for agency where you have to pay for tenant so whatever that it was in that house that was going on in that house when you pack in this person packs out you also inherit you 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 can also inherit the tenancy yes sir as a tenant now what am i talking about a lot of you now a landlord has right so come at any time and say, come, your, uh, if this rent expires, you go, I don't want you anymore. A landlord is the one who comes to take his rent when it's due. The landlord does not want to know whether your business is going well or not. The landlord is not, does not want to hear that you say, oh, the economy, or there is COVID-19, or there was a global economical meltdown or something. The landlord will not want to hear that. The landlord comes to collect his tenant. There are many of you, demonic landlords have been collecting things from your hand. Oh. Today, I bring the battle to an end. Yeah. Now, as we go forward, do, you, you will understand this. Now, the Bible told us that in the book of John chapter 5, that a certain man was carried by his family. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, sir. A certain man was carried by his family. And then the Bible told us that because the man was a sick man, he was taken to, uh, to this uh, 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 pool of Bethsaida where an angel comes to trouble the water once in a season. And whenever the angel troubles the water, the Bible said, whoever steps into the water first does what is made whole. Now here we have a man, the Bible told us for 38 good years, yes. the man has been there. The man is not, his sickness is not 38 years old. The man is not 38 years old. 38 years is the time he has waited and wasted in that place without getting healing. Because when you look at that man, you will see that that man is a person that the spiritual landlord comes to and take rent from. Yes, sir. What do I mean? One time Jesus came, as Jesus was passing, Jesus saw the man. Jesus said, what would you want me to do for you? The man went ahead ranting and complaining. He said, I have been here many years for 38 years. Now, for that 38, for that 38 years, I have seen miracle, but I have not received the miracle. You have been in a place where people prosper, but you don't prosper. Yes, you have gone to do the business other people do to prosper, but you don't prosper. Yes, Every time you try to prosper who is the landlord that comes to take your prosperity kill the landlord every time you want to go so the man was so painful even though he was face to face with jesus he said master every time the angel troubles the water i see miracle face to face yet i'm unable to enter it has happened again and again and again and again the man was angry complaining protesting to jesus for he forgot that jesus can handle a situation oh. what happened to this man he said, every time I'm close to entering, another person enters. You know business. But every time you are to break through, a spiritual landlord in any way comes to collect the rent and take something from you. I pray for somebody today. Anything they have taken from you by the power of the Holy Ghost, it shall be returned back. It shall be returned back. In the name of Jesus. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. Man, uh -huh. this is very serious and this is real yes. because look at this man for 38 years that man that has been in that position he saw healing yet he could not get healing yes sir he saw the angel trouble the water yet he could not fall into for, for for healing to happen because every time he goes in somebody else takes over who is the person that is taking your deliverance yes. at the point when it's supposed to happen yes. who is the landlord that comes to collect the rent uh -huh. that says i am the owner of this place uh -huh. but when you walk they come to collect uh -huh. i don't care to know who the altar uh -huh. the spiritual landlord is yeah. but after this morning yes. every demonic landlord uh -huh. taking Taking children uh -huh. by the power of the Holy Ghost, yeah. I command them to be operated. Yeah. I command the supernatural recovery. Yeah. I say recovery. Yeah. I say recovery. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. somebody shout yes. Yeah. Sit down. Take your seat. 
Work it, sir. A woman gets pregnant. At a certain month, the woman loses the pregnancy. A woman gets pregnant. At a certain month, the woman loses the pregnancy. A woman gets pregnant. At a certain time, at a certain month, she loses the pregnancy. What happens? Have you ever wondered? Have you ever thought of it? Have you ever watched it spiritually? What happens is that a certain person claims ownership and says, once you get pregnant, I come to take it. And the same month, that means if you pay salary, I mean, if you enter into, if you pack, move into a house by January, you pay the owner for one year. That means by January again, you are expected to make another payment. So why is it that some people they get pregnant when the pregnant is when the pregnancy gets to three months, they must lose it. They will have a certain kind of demonic visitation in their dream. Some of them they will see something red in their dream. Some will see palm oil. Some will see a madman come to them in their dream. Some it will be a masquerade comes to them. And the moment they have such encounter, they might lose it. It might not be only a pregnant woman. There are people who lose different things at, when they have a certain visitation. And then, the, uh, and, and then, so if the landlord, if you pay by January, another January makes it one year, the landlord comes to collect it. Now you take in as a woman, and you, when the pregnancy gets to three months or four months, now that is the time you lose that pregnancy because there is a landlord that comes to collect the, tenor, oh. the, the rent. Every landlord that has been collecting what belongs to you, I prophesy from today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, yes. they will let you go. Everything they have taken, they will release it back to you. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout to you. Lift up your hands, say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spiritual landlord. Every spiritual landlord. Take in my glory. Take in my glory. By the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. I fight back. I fight back. I demand. I demand. For the release. For the release. Of my glory. Of my glory. Clap your hands and pray. Sit down for a moment, for a moment, for a moment. We're almost there. Now listen carefully. There are some other of you, uh, because it's all about aborting what, what is given to you. Now there are some other of you, anytime you are to have major breakthrough, when you work and work and work and that thing is closed, that is the point in time that power shows. Yes, sir. Because there is something that gives that power access and attorney. There is something that gives that power the right of access, the right of attorney, the right of ownership. Because you can't just get into where you don't belong to you and take things anyhow. Even Jesus said, He said, for you to for you to take for you to take the goods of the strong man, he said, You got to ban the strong man. Yes. Then when you ban the strong man, you got to break the, the, the stronghold, yes. the storeroom, then for you to make a release i want to make a release this morning release. but i need you to understand some things as a regard as it relates to this subject yes. because it's very very important there are many of you at a point in life you struggle you work when that breakthrough matures when it's about to come you you will have a dream that's why i took you to the word of god first he said though we dwell in the flesh we do not war by the flesh for the weapons of our warfare now mark mark i want you to mark this word it is not plural. I mean, it's not singular, it's plural. It didn't say a weapon, it said weapons. So there are different kinds of weapons that are deployed in the spirit realm. Yes. Now, when it gets to your turn to break through, you know you knew that job is going to come or that marriage breakthrough is going to happen. Then all of a sudden, a certain personality appears in your dream and it has been happening again and again the same way. There is no exchange because your landlord is your landlord. Yes, sir. He will come to collect the rent. Yes, sir. He waits for the time. 
And when that time comes, the landlord comes to take the rent. But I want to pray for somebody today. You will recover all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pray for me. Very quickly, the Bible said, one man slept, the enemy came to Sota. Now, for the enemy to have access, that means there are, there are levels, there are things, there are knowledge, there are things the enemy knew about you. Yes, there are some transactions that gave the enemy right. Understand, you don't just move into a house once you pay money. No, if, before you move into a house, you go through the lawyer. That's why they prepare agreement. You sign, and the part of the agreement, they say, uh, why you pay caution fee? You pay certain amount of money. They call it caution fee. They say, in case if you, if you, if you get anything spoiled or destroyed in the house, they will use the money to replace it back. Now, my question is that, what was the caution fee that was signed on your behalf? Uh. What was the caution fee? Who signed the caution fee? That means this money is a collateral and that money is what you are supposed to use. But the enemy say, I seize it because of the agreement. Because your, your signature was appended to that agreement and that validates the power and right of the landlord because it's an agreement between the tenant and the landlord. Yes, now, let us go back. Now, going forward, there are powers. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Now, some of you, what has given the enemy power of access, power and right of ownership to access you, to move in when they like and move out when they like? Let's quickly look at it. Number one is as a result of the transactions of the fathers. Now, by the reason of the transactions of the fathers, you got implicated because if you read your Bible very well, the Bible said in the book of Lamentation chapter 5 and number 7, it says, our fathers have seen and they no more, but we bore the iniquities of our fathers. Yes. How come we carried the iniquities of our fathers? Because though we might not be there when our father entered that contract, but the contract covered us. Yes, now, if your father writes a will, whether you are there or not, when, whether you are there or not, whether you are aware of the will, the will covers you. If your father asks his lawyer to say, oh, this property belongs to so-so son, this property belongs to so-so daughter, this property belongs to so-so wife, this money belongs to this one and is recorded, that becomes what it is. Yes, sir. That's what it is. And there is nothing more than that. That's how it's operated. And you got to understand this dedication, the role they play, how it works. How it operates. So once that agreement is reached, that is what stands. You don't need to be there. The lawyer only comes as an executor. He reads the will and he says, this, is, this and this belongs to you. This and this belongs to you. What is the will that was written that the enemy is not saying poverty belongs to you? Uh, the will. Who wrote it? Who wrote the will? What is now the thing that was, that was written that they say you will never be stable in life? What is the will that not gave the enemy that, that the power to take your caution fee? That means anytime something good is coming, we have agreement and part of the agreement is that there is a collateral and somebody did something somewhere and somebody must have to take uh, uh, something as interest. And when you if you borrow money from the bank, when the month ends for them to take their money, they don't need to inform you. As long as the money is there, it's automatic. It's automatic, including the, 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 uh, uh, the capital or whatever they call it, the main money you're supposed to pay and the interest. They debit it from your account immediately. Now, there are some of you there are such transactions that have taken place in the spirit. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, sir. But the reason of this transaction, it's giving the enemy the upper hand. Now, anytime something good is about to happen, what is the interest that the enemy takes from you? Some of you, anything that will bring you happiness could be the interest. That thing is, is matured going where that all of a sudden, because that thing has not been dealt with properly what happens the enemy comes at that point in time and says i am here the bank does not inform you where they come to take it the enemy just come and takes it they don't need to inform you because they have access by the reason of the transactions that took place yes, is anybody hearing me yes papa. now very quickly i will be rounding up then we'll pray now watch this i'll give you 
a, a little example. If, for example, you came from family where they worship idol, by the reason of that, you have been implicated very terribly. And when we talk about altars and transactions, I was saying that during the Commanding Your Day broadcast this morning. Now, you got to understand something because a lot of people are ignorant. And hear me, child of God, as long as you have become a Christian and you are ignorant, your ignorance is the power of the devil. The devil doesn't have power. Your ignorance is his power. Yes, he says my people perish for the lack of knowledge. He didn't say my people are perishing because the devil is too powerful. He didn't say my people are poor because I cannot prosper them or because the devil is powerful. God at any time never mentioned anything about the devil. So ignorance is a license to bondage. Now, when there is a transaction in place, for example, you came from family where they worship idol. And some of you, basically, there are three ways these powers have right of access. And I mentioned something this morning in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 3, if you read from verse number 25 down, the Bible showed us how Joab killed a man, Abner, that was pardoned by the king. He was granted a, pre a presidential pardon, and Abner wasn't having it. Then Abner went after the guy as, if, as though he wanted to talk to the guy privately. And the Bible said it came to pass that Abner stabbed him to his fifth rib, and the guy died. And when he died, it was told to the king. The king came out. The king said, I and my family, my kingdom, my household, we are exempted, we are guiltless of the blood of Asahel. He said, by the reason of what you have done, all the consequences that this blood should bring will be upon you and your family. And part of the consequences is a let it not cease. In the house of Joab, give me verse 20, 26, 27. Let it not cease in the house of Joab, one with an issue. You know what it means? What it means spiritually, a pace has been set. A pattern has started and the demons that that work in the characters of such pattern they are invited immediately yes sir. and their work is to enforce it now you will see the characters that you will see there 27 and when Abner was returned to the Hebron give me because of time give me 28 quickly 28 28 and afterward when David had heard it he said I and my kingdom we are guiltless before the Lord forever from the blood of Abner, the son of Ner. 29. Let it rest on the head of Joab and on all his father's house. Now, let it rest on the head of Joab on all, on all his father's house. Now, anybody who is a member of that family is implicated by the reason of the bloodshed. Yes, sir. Now, the house simply means family generation. That means anybody that will come into that generation, even before they, I mean, before they enter into that family, they have been implicated. So as soon as they come, there is a character that enforces, there is a demon that enforces that this, thing, that, that this thing goes on in the family. He said, now, let there not fail from the house of Joab one that had an issue. That means you can get a job today, you will lose the job. Yes, sir. You must play with your job. You must misbehave because there is a force that will compel you. Though we dwell in the flesh, but we do not war by the flesh. So it is the spiritual that controls the physical. Yes, Either they might make you start misbehaving, you don't come early, they will give you query, you might talk to your boss anyhow, and then you must lose your job. It might be a relationship, a relationship that is working or that is supposed to produce something. Then you must misbehave, you must come up because it's not just you. Apostle Paul said the things I want to do, I don't see myself doing. But it's the things that I don't that I, I don't want to do that I see myself doing. He said, Oh, not me. This thing is strong. Now, you in your mind, you said, I'm going to do something different this time around. But the moment that time comes, because this spirit will not rise until that time comes. Yes, sir. Because the spirits are time sensitive. You don't get what I'm saying. Yes, Papa. Preach it. Work it. If the flight is going to take off by 11 and you are traveling in town, that's why they say you, have, you got to be at the airport three hours 
before your flight time if you are traveling internationally because there are flights they will move by that 11 dots so once it's that time the flight will take off it will take off now no problem you will not have issue but the moment you enter into a relationship that will lead to somewhere the power must come because it's time sensitive you must have issue you enter into a job that will that will help your life one month two months three months don't you see people they get this job today they can't keep it they get another job they can't keep it yes sir. they get another job they can't keep it because as long as they don't get job the spirit will not come mm. the spirit looks at the time as soon as somebody gets a job or go into something that spirit comes because the spirit the work of the spirit is to do that because there is an access by the reason of transactions or wrong or actions that were that took place in the past yes sir. and now it's hunting down people number one he said there will not cease to be one with an issue all that is a leper and this kind of things will work on people's character that's the reason why if you don't understand how this thing relates the enemy can throw one weakness into your body and the enemy doesn't just come to you the enemy assesses you by what you already have as weakness and as need yes sir and that's why the bible says you got to resist the devil and they will flee any man and a woman who intend to go far in life that have not been able to go to the presence of Elohim to receive the bread and the, the baptism of fire from God to say certain things cannot control me. I control and I determine because the enemy needs one character from you to finish you. Yes, sir. The enemy does not need to import anything. You, what your destruction is already embedded in you. It's already embedded in you. You have anger, you talk to people anyhow. That is what will destroy you. Anything good that is coming, that thing will destroy you. It might be the day the man, a man is coming to marry you or introducing you. Something might go wrong and you will start reacting. No, don't talk to me. No, who are you? They say, no, our, our son cannot go here. Oh, reach it. It might be you, the day God wants to help you, bless you. The enemy has imputed into you weakness, sexual weakness, that you can't stay, you can't resist the enemy. That becomes a platform and a character that the enemy promotes and amplifies. What will the enemy do? The enemy will use it to destroy you. Look at me, everybody. Give me your, give me your attention for the next few seconds, very quickly. Is anybody getting is anybody getting this? Yes, Papa. Now listen. Now, a man anointed, empowered by Elohim to produce kings and to be a lawgiver. You know what the enemy did to keep the man? The enemy saw loophole of weakness in the family. And that weakness is weak, is bodily weakness of sex. You want to go far you want to be great you want to be anointed and greatly used by god you want to prosper and yet you can't deal with that weakness you are not going anywhere you're going to continue to move around in one circle again and again I covenanted and decided that those things, such kind of thing will never be a problem to me because I'm, I have a journey, I, I have somewhere I'm going to, so I decide that it will never be a stumbling block to me. Shouldn't be a problem. It depends on what you are pursuing. You got to drop one thing. John the Baptist said, I must decrease for Jesus to increase. There is something you must kill in you if you want to see God because you need God to get to where you're going to. No man succeeds on earth without divine assistance. Yes, sir. Preach it, Papa. If you got to, if you if you have to succeed, you can't just be doing things anyhow.
You can't be a man, you are having sex anyhow. I mean, you are sleeping with men. You are, you are sleeping with women. You don't, have, you don't have covenant of discipline. You're not going anywhere. You're a married woman. A married woman, you say men are chasing you. They chase you here. They, you're, as soon as you start opening your legs for men, you start killing your husband. As soon as you start opening your leg, you say, this man pursue you, this man pursue you, this man pursue you. Something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. Why would somebody have a God knowing that you are married? One useless person somewhere and is coming after you. One, two, three, and different of them. And you still go to carry those kind of things and bring it to the house. Then you as a man, you say you want to prosper, you want God to help you. And yet you have not dealt with this thing. You can't go far. It is the characters of your father's house that is playing. Judah, I mean, Judah refused to deal with this. Hence, Judah saw a lady who dressed like a prostitute, putting on the attire of a prostitute. And the lady went, stood by the roadside. And when Judah saw it, that means for the girl to play like an alert, he knew that she knew the weakness in the family of Judah. She knows. Yes, sir. She knows. She knows, sir. She did not use money because money will not work. She used the weakness that is known in the family. You see that weakness that is in your family, you are saying it's normal. God will understand. God will answer. I, I can't you see your life from year to year? Still the same story. One day go better. You know go better. The better starts from you. Yes, sir. Your decision that you deliberately make. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, Papa. Preach it, sir. You want to be great and yet you don't want to pay the sacrifice of greatness. We didn't maintain this level of grace by misbehaving. We have not grown from strength to strength. By living reckless life. That's why when I look at some of you come here to do like this, I say, these people, you are in the wrong place. Sir. You are in the wrong place. Very wrong place, sir. Very wrong place. We've looked, we've looked, we, we, that one, no. No. No! It's not part of the equation. Yes, sir. We are too busy to know that such thing exists. Yes, sir. Take your business to somewhere else. That market does not sell here. Bad market. Bad market. We're too busy to know that such kind of thing, to see that they say that kind of thing. For us, it doesn't exist. Oh. No way. There is a price you pay. Yes, sir. You don't want to pay the price. Everybody sees that there is a great potential in you, but you are killing the potential in you by the way of doing the same thing again and again. That's the character your father's author puts in you. When Judah slept with that, that lady, Unknown to Judah that it was the daughter-in-law. And by the way of doing that, incest has been committed. Another scene, the lady became pregnant and delivered. And the Bible said, a bastard shall not come into the lost congregation for 10 generations, which is 500 years. So why, why are you doing what to make? You, you are saying, oh God, I want to be great. What? Pay the price! I want the anointing of Dr. Chris Okafo. I want the anointing of Renan Bunker. I want, and yet, you can't pray. You can't fast. Pay the price. The things you have to deliberately 
that they, they have to die. You have goose for sale. Take it to somewhere else. We don't buy it here. Preach it, sir. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, Papa. 500 years they lost their kingship. The enemy just needs something in you. That's what destroyed the house of David. For 500 years, the Bible said for nine generations, no king came. If you read Matthew chapter 1, the Bible said until he got to the 10th generation where David the king came. Now, that same David the king, the enemy also saw the weakness in his father's blood. It was in him. The same weakness, was it not what, what almost destroyed the house of David? This time around, David saw somebody's wife and said, this woman, eh, bring her for me. And after doing that, he, got to, he had to kill the husband of the woman. He had to kill the husband of the woman. And God came and God said, for this thing that you have done, eh, you will suffer. I will raise enemies against you. You cannot be carrying a can in your midst and you want to defeat your enemy. God said to Israel in Joshua chapter 6, he says, he says, as long as you have a can in the midst of you, I will never go with you anymore. You know the country that defeated Israel, the smallest country they ever faced. They are just like their name. Aye. AI or I. Defeated them. And when they came, the Bible said the heart of the people of Israel melted. And God said, they said, God, Joshua said, God, why have you done this to us? God said, it's because you have the accosting. If you have a cost character, the enemy will amplify it and use it to destroy you. David did not deal with it. He got to his son. That one, that one's own became, become worst. Kill that thing now before it kills you. It will stop you. You have to be very careful. Before we begin to pray, you need to understand this. That's how the landlord, as, as powerful as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Like I said, the devil does not come with something new. It's something that is already in you. That's what he uses. He does not need something new. Because to bring something new, it will not match with what already exists. Yes, sir. He needs something new. He waits. What it does is this. The Bible said Jesus was done fasting and praying. How many days? 40 days. Forty days and forty nights. And the Bible said for Jesus was hungry, right? Yes, he sir. was hungry. Now, when Satan came to him, did, Satan did not ask him, are you sure you are a child of God? The Bible said the devil knew that Jesus was hungry. So what did, what did, what did, the, what did the devil use to tempt him? What is already part of his system? His system needs food. And he said, take this, turn this stone into bread, for you are hungry. Is Jesus truly hungry? Yes. Does he need food? Yes. But not everything your body needs, you will give to it. Yes, sir. If you want to go far. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. But out of every word that proceeds fat from the mouth of God, yes. that man shall live by. And immediately, Satan came again. He took him to a high mountain. He said, if you truly you are the son of God, he knows Jesus is the son of God. He said, jump down from this place. He quoted scripture. Was the scripture correct? Yes. Psalm 91. He said, for we, he will give his angels charge over you. Jesus said, Satan, you are too small now to tempt me like this. He didn't use anything different. He didn't bring anything from outside. Then again, he took Jesus to a high mountain and showed him the glory of the world in a moment of time. And he said, bow down to me. That would have been the greatest temptation. Because Jesus, they came down, made man. After making man, they gave man that glory. And the temptation that man lost the glory, it would have even, even been enough for Jesus to say, I want to get this glory back. 
but he took the process. The process. Follow the process and got the glory back. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you, Papa. So Satan never came with anything different. He knew Jesus would want the glory to be restored back to man. He wanted to truncate and interfere with the process. And Jesus disciplined him. And watch this, somebody. The Bible said, after then, the devil left. He left. So the devil comes to shake you, throw you up, do everything. And then he gets you, he stays. After the devil left, the Bible said the contingents of heaven came. The angels, they came to attend to Jesus. The angels that will bring your next level, they are always waiting. They are seeing how you will deal with the devil. For the fact that you have fasted for many days does not mean God will come. The devil will show up first. Yes, sir. After you have prayed and fasted, you have prayed and fasted, the devil will show up first. The devil wants to use the weakness in you to see that if you have really passed. It might be somebody you have prayed, but you have unforgiving spirit. And it brings someone that you don't like that you have not forgiven. And you seize that person. The devil, that is the devil that sponsored the person to show up. And the angels are waiting. How do you pass this test? And the person said, good afternoon. Hmm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The devil says, you see it, but your word says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That thing cancels. The angels, they, they get disappointed, they return back. And they go. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you break out from this battle. Yeah. And this thing strengthens the landlord to come and collect their rent again and again. And today as we pray, I declare that every landlord that, that they handed over, that they handed you over to, yes. in the name of Jesus, I release you from the hold of God. Amen. You must make up your mind. There are people every year, they are deliverance, they are coming for deliverance every year. Your deliverance, not the finish. You are holding the property that belongs to Satan. You are saying, Satan, go. You get only temporary deliverance. He will come back again to collect his rent. So you don't pay for this January. January will soon come. He will collect his rent. The only way you stop that insult is to build your house. Yes, sir. You build your house. You build spiritually. That's the only way that harassment stops. You can't come every day, you are delivered today, then tomorrow the devil comes again. And so the devil can't get power. As long as the devil spots what belongs to him, he will come. He said, an evil spirit goes out of a man. This is Jesus speaking oh, in Matthew chapter 12 from verse 38. He said, an evil spirit is cast out of a man. He said, the demon, the spirit goes through dry places seeking for a place to dwell. And he finds none, then he says to himself, I will return back. So you must understand that the, the, that the powers we are dealing with, they have will. That's to say willpower. And you can't, you can't break down easily somebody that has a will. I will return back to my former house to go see. Number one, I'm not just going to enter there. I will first go and see if the place is empty. And then dirty. Then he will go back, this time not coming alone. He will go and take seven different demons. You are a man believing God. This year they pray for you for breakthrough. Uh, last month they pray for you for breakthrough. And God is giving you the breakthrough. Then you go again and destroy things. In the name of pleasure. He that is joined together with an harlot automatically becomes an harlot. You sleep with different ladies. This one carries the spirit of python. This one carries the spirit of bad luck. This one carries the spirit of gathering and scattering. This one carries the spirit of rising and falling. And this one carries the spirit of hatred. You connect all of them. And those things come into operation in your life. Who told you your deliverance is difficult? Your deliverance is the easiest thing to do. Yes, sir. You make up your mind and hit your chest that from today, I enter into covenant with God. That this and this I will not do. This and this I will not do. If I do it, kill me, God. You want to be serious? Yes, now. 
Let the devil know you are serious. So the day you decide to die, you go and do it. And if you, you want to die now, go do one. You can, you can go up and remain up. Yes, sir. We can operate. The laws of the spirit where we operate is better than the, the, the aerodynamic laws. The gravitational law says anything that goes up can come down. But the aerodynamic law says anything that goes up can remain up. Yes, that the law of the spirit is better than the aerodynamic law. Yes, sir. The law of the spirit has the ability and the capability and the super ability to sustain you as long as the spirit keeps breathing the oxygen of life in you. Yes, sir. The law of the spirit. You can be a young lady, you coming for deliverance, believing God for marriage, but you're sleeping with somebody's husband. Because you believe in, you say the man has money. What deliverance can you get? Stand to your feet, everybody. So this landlord, how do they have power over you? They will master your character. They don't, there's nothing because they are in your family. They know what they can use in destroying your family. So when your father, by the time your father, your grandfather went to that idol and said, we want you to protect us. We want you to prosper us. And in return, me and my house, we will worship you forever. I covenant them to you. You were not born, but you were already covenanted. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, sir. So by so doing, you are implicated. You are, you are in the covenant you are in the register of that demon. And the spirit begins to follow you, destroy things in your life, because it's a landlord. That's why anytime you want to break through, some of you, you will see yourself going to the village in your dream, because it was in the village that covenant was entered into. They are showing you that even though you might be in Lagos, you might be in London, you might be in Canada, in America, but spiritually, now here will tie you, you can't go beyond there. Anytime you want to break through or something good wants to happen, the spirit reminds you that we are the landlord. Have you wondered why you get up at night to pray? After praying at midnight, you pray maybe for two, three hours. After prayers, you go to sleep and the same spirit comes to sleep with you or feed you in the dream. How many of you have experienced that? Yes, sir. Uh, come on, talk to me. Yes, sir. Huh? Who acts that way? Is a landlord that acts that way. Mm. For the father, landlord collected rent this year does not mean you will not collect last year. The landlord will come to collect rent. Now you have prayed. You know what the demon did? He said, no problem, you are free to pray. Landlord knows somebody you don't pray for your house now. He go collect the rent. Say you have finished praying, you go to sleep, he will come back, I'm the owner of this house. By the law, by rights, the father gave them to me. So it work, you must understand the legal technicalities of this matter. Yes, sir. Some of you say, oh, but we don't have any... Altar is not only something that is physical. It's not a hewn stone or where they put a tree or where they put heap of things or the other one. No, some of you came from family and you know that your parents did not go to church. They were visiting, patronizing one native doctor to the other. They were patronizing them. Since you don't know what this altar, let me, let me show you another form they operate. Now, that time your father... Your mother went to one native doctor and brought charm to the house, protect my family. Now, what is in that charm? Is it that thing in that bottle or that calabash? No, it is the spirit that follows it. Now, that spirit comes and begins to live in the clan because they invited the spirit to come. Yes, now, sir. they go to another native doctor. They bring another charm. We want this one for our children to prosper. They bring it. That demon also comes there and stays in that family. Now they go for another one. They bring another one. They come there. It becomes a place where activities of demons begin to take place. Yes. Altar is a place of, of demonic activities. Or positive activities, if it's, for, if it's a positive altar. Is somebody, is somebody hearing me? Yes, sir. So you need to understand. So those demons, you say, but our father did not tell us any idol they worship. You are not wise. Forgive my language. You are ignorant. Did they not carry you to a native doctor to put mark in your body? What was that incision they put in your body? What was it for? 
Why did they put that incision in your body and, uh, and make some, some demonic concussion, then put it inside your body? That's an open door now. Yes, sir. You only, they told you, but you don't know the kind of spirit that it is. You are blind. Let mercy speak for you today. Amen. I said, let mercy speak for you. Amen. Are we still together? Yes, sir. Everybody listen to me. It doesn't matter who you are. Give yourself timeline. You say, from today, I want to make a difference. And I entered a covenant and I make a vow from this day. That what the enemy uses as the weakness, the weakening link, the weak link, today I block it. I enter into covenant that the enemy will not operate in my life through that anymore. Covenant with God and see wonders. Don't be talking story. You have talent, yet you are not disciplined. You have a calling, you are not disciplined. You are not disciplined with your body prayerfully. You are not disciplined with money. Nobody, nobody, nobody rises and becomes great like that. It doesn't matter the position you are. Especially when you have a position or a platform, you are using that platform like the sons of Eli, you will be destroyed. This platform does not belong to us. It belongs to God. And the day I start using this platform as my own, God will judge me and judge my family. That's why every time I come here, on my heart, David said, that word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. What do, I, what do we do, Lord? Let there be another dimension. Give us idea, give us inspiration. Everyone in my house, even including the security men, they know that from 12, to six or seven, we stay awake. It's a time of prayer. We don't concord to what the body wants. You can't command certain results by sleeping on your bed. You can't command certain results by going about misbehaving. It's not possible. Stop limiting the glory of God. In any dimension you are, there is another dimension. Yes, sir. Don't die in the glory. There is a glory greater. The path of the righteous is like a shining light. That shineth brighter and brighter. Have you told yourself that I will not pass through this earth without making impact? Let us pay the price for impact. God, while you are going through, while you are going through cities, nations, choosing men, looking for men, do not pass me by. I am here and ready to do something different. Stephen was not a pastor. He was just a church worker. But who decided to sanctify and and decided to stand apart. And the Bible said, through the hands of Stephen, many signs and wonders were wrought. Lift up your hands wherever you are. One time the security men they were discussing, they said, but this man know they sleep. When they get time, they rest. I finish that and move to this place. You think, you think when you see people successful, people doing well, and you are angry at them, you are jealous at them, you say the things you like. 
You can never grow. You can never become like them. You can never be great because they are not telling you the sacrifice they are making. Many billionaires don't sleep at night. Are you aware? Yes, sir. Be sleeping now. Do you wonder why you don't see billionaires? Read billionaire that made money in the right way. Have you noticed? That there are they won't dash, they can't dash you money. Huh? If you meet with Big today, he won't dash you. He won't bring hundred dollars to dash you. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, Dan Gotez, Chris O'Kafos. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Why are you laughing? Yes, sir. Oh, you don't know I'm a billionaire. You are, sir. Yeah. Do you understand? Why you are sleeping? We are doing things. Yes, sir. Go and check the secret of Jesus. Jesus will wake up at early in the morning around 3 a.m. and pray till 8 a.m. Don't compare, go and check it out in, in, Jew, in Jews and Matthew Henry's Bible commentary. I will not give sleep to my eyes unless I find a place for the mighty one of Jacob. And my body is used to it. It gets to that time, the Holy Spirit wakes me up. It gets to that time, my body wakes up. Pray. All I need to sleep is one hour. All this your theory that people will sleep seven hours, eight hours, that is a healthy sleep. I'm not doubting you. But the, both the person that wrote that thing and both the people that did the research, I am healthy, more yes, healthier sir. than all yes, of them. Sir. Many of them have one medication or the other they take. With all the work. Don't take. The other time, there was a, a school fee scheme I got my children registered into. So that way I can, you know, it, uh, they, they say it looks like insurance. I said, okay, it's like a saving something where automatically you don't need to, you know, pay. It's not just because of my children, because I have a lot of school fees of people that I pay every time. Many. So they came, they said, yes. Um, the company said, you have to do complete tests. He said, because um, uh, by the reason of that test, he said, in years to come, uh, there will be a, a nest of kin or this and that that will take over. I said, come, you are, waste, you are going to waste your time. Because when you, by the time you finish your test, everything is going to come at 100%. He said, we, but we have to do it. That's the policy of it. I said, no problem. Pastor Henry brought them. He said, I have to take off my shirt. I took it off. They fixed all manner of things, some in my chest, some in my body. By the time they took my blood, I said, okay, you don't finish. He said, yes, sir. We are true man of God. We are sorry for taking it. And the next time they brought the result, everything Correct, not the same. I'm the one that don't rest. Any test at all you can think of, they did. So if it was, if it's to be by that, the Bible said there is one that waked up early, and there is another God given sleep. Yes, sir. You don't know what it means. Lift up your hands. I will explain on Sunday. I put you in front. In front of my melody, you are all the matters. You are all the matters. I'm bedroom for two. Just you and I, Jesus. You are all the matters. You are all the matters. I'll put you in front of. In front of. 
and gentlemen before we begin to pray and we're going to close early we'll pray then we'll close I came from family where strange things were happening you know where you are coming from and you are still you are still reckless in my family we are four boys four four men and all the ones ahead of me they died two of them it's just me and my immediate younger brother it should be about 34, 35 now, my junior brother. And listen, but for that, there were three girls ahead of me. Three girls ahead of me the two boys first then the girls three girls ahead of me then when the two boys died i was i was i mean yeah I've, uh, i was born but something happened the second boy died earlier by name fabian The senior one was called Ike. And it was three girls. And the typical tradition, tradition, traditional Nigerian people in mentality that says, if man child and this. So my mother was a lot of under pressure. She was under a lot of pressure. She went through a lot. Both from Pressures of my dad's extended family. One, the male child, and all that. Three girls ahead of me. So at that point in time, prophecies were given that I would be born. But while my mother was praying, so I didn't choose that I would become who I am. It was chosen. It's a covenant before I was born. So my mother went, and it was prophesied that you are going to have a son, and the son will be a great light. And that's why my mother called me that name. They told him that is what will be my, my, my native name, Igbo name, means the light of God. Yes, sir. That is going to be like Christ. It will walk like Christ. And that's why my name is Christ-like. But look at this. With all that pressure, she was praying and they said, God, if you give him to me, he will serve you for the rest of his life. And I would train him, I would make sure it worked for you. A woman, the old woman was fasting and praying. And then, when she discovered that she is taken in, she went to the market 
and got what they what is widely regarded as the post, the, the portrait of Jesus. You remember those picture? Yes. Those sir. portrait. Then she went to the market and got it. And every now and then when she's praying, she would take that portrait and say, God, you told me I'm going to have a son that will be a prophet and there will be a great light and you will use him mightily. And say, Lord, Jesus, I want this boy to be like you. So when she sleeps, she takes that portrait and puts it on her womb. The thing started a long time ago. And she puts it on her, on her womb. And she will sleep like that and lay and lay her womb upward. And she was doing that every, every day for nine months. As soon when they were pregnant, they did not bother to go and check if it's a boy or not a boy. Because I came from a very strong Christian family. They did not bother. They believed the word of God. They believed the prophecies that came. Again and again, confirmation from different great people. And after them, she told me, she and my father told me the story. I'm sure maybe my, my mom is in the church. And the hospital where they gave birth to me, somebody who they don't know paid the hospital bill, the taxi driver they called to take them home saw me and said, no, there's something about this boy. Did not collect money from them. And went home. So, as I was growing up, my mother told me, and they told her that this thing will manifest at the age of eight. From the age of eight, I began to prophesy after I've received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But you know something? Things were still happening in my family. Then God said, you know where you are coming from. You know what is pursuing you. You left your home. You traveled abroad. You came to Lagos. Don't you know the family where you came from? You have forgotten. When I know where I'm coming from and what is pursuing me, there are reasons why I can't do, I can't be, I can't be reckless. There are reasons why I can't live anyhow. There are reasons why I am committed with all my life to God because I know where I'm coming from. The enemy has attempted to kill me many times just the way he killed people. The ones after me who broke through it. We can't take our foot off the gas. He's still looking for a way to strike when you give him. Why would you open up for the enemy? Lift up your hands, we're going to pray. You know what is going on in your family. Why are you playing with your salvation? Contend with it. Give me Jude chapter 1. This is what I want you to do. Give me Jude from verse 1. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Do you ever wonder why I'm committed the way I'm committed? Huh? Why even at the expense of my rest, when there is a soul to save, to win for the kingdom, I will go and live my rest? Do you know me with that kind of character? Come on, talk to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you ever wondered why I worship God? When I worship Him, I cry worshiping Him. Have you ever wondered why I worship him the way I worship him? Have you ever wondered why I pray the way I pray and fast the way I fast and serve God the way I serve God? You got to, you got to get to this level of commitment. That's where I'm coming from. Fight for it. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Three. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend 
for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints you contend you fight for it you fight fear and trembling shall you walk out your salvation because there are polluters everywhere left and right they can be your friend they can be in the same church with you it's not about it's not about it's about you 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 as for me and my family as for me even if you belong to a group or you belong to any department and the person is taking undue advantage of you to try to do rubbish that will affect you and you keep quiet and you do it it's your destruction that's why you can't go forward no matter the prayer you receive number four he said for there are certain men certain there are certain men crept in unawares they might be among us they talk like we talk they can pray like we pray but their mission is different what do you call that a married man stands in the church and see you as a young lady knows that you want to marry and the man is telling you to come and see him in the hotel and the man demands for your account number he sent you money to entice you both the lady and the man they are mad they are not fighting they are not contending they are destroyed that's why they are the way they are He said, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. You are following people that have been ordained for condemnation to join them. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. They say, don't worry now. God understand now. You know, you, have you heard that kind of thing before? Yes, sir. See, these are people, ungodly men, ungodly people, ungodly women. You know something? You are not on the same journey with everyone. Mind the journey. Mind what God assigned you to do. Follow it. You cannot be going to Sokoto and enter the same bus with somebody that is going to that is going to worry. You won't get to your destination. Because the assignment of the enemy is to make sure you don't get to your destination, to make sure that God rejects you. Like King Saul was doing exploit, exploit until he was polluted. You know what God told him? God said, Go into the land, kill everyone. It's my opportunity. Because these people, they are my enemy forever. I will seek for an occasion to wipe them out. And that time presented him, himself, and Saul was the king. And God said to, to Samuel, go tell him, go to Agag, destroy every living thing, including animals. Let nothing single earth. You know that's what they did to Ai. To Ai. They destroyed no single man escaped in Ai. Go and read your Bible, Joshua chapter 6, chapter 7. And then, why they were killing everybody? The king said, you don't need to kill us. You can take me as your slave. Listen. The king said, this sheep, this fatting sheep, you don't, need to, you don't need to destroy them. You can take them for sacrifice. And this guy, this king took them. And when... The prophet came to, to, to check the report, the report card. He saw something. He said, how far is everything went well? And he said, but uh, is it not the bleeding of sheep I'm hearing there? He said, yes, I brought some for sacrifice. What? He said, I didn't ask you for sacrifice. What I ask you is to destroy. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Doesn't matter how you sacrifice. Why you give money? Or how you display money? As long as the motive is not godly. The 
the prophet said because of what you have done in your neighbor one of your neighbor will take over from you the kingdom has been handed over to him and the guy ran he said please let me go and kill him when he got to Agag this is the most shocking thing that's what your enemy that's what they want to do some people are destroyed they know they are destroyed but they want to pollute you then they came to Agag said give me the sword I'm going to kill you Agag said come look at me if you kill me no problem now the bitterness of death is gone that's what Agag said to him so I'm no longer bitter if you kill me because I have succeeded in making God reject you as a king how many times have they succeeded in making God withdraw his glory from you reject you because of what lift up your hands you must ask God for you must there must be total repentance and you make up your mind that from today I want to serve God in truth and in spirit the devil is not always delaying you, you are the one delaying yourself lift up your hands I want you to cry to him and tell him that you are really sorry I am sorry Lord I am sorry Lord I am sorry Lord I am sorry Lord I am sorry 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 I am sorry Lord Oh Jabara Sando I am sorry Lord I am sorry Lord Jehovah I am sorry Sorry. I am sorry, Lord. I am 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 sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. We are sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. I am, I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry. I am sorry, Lord. 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 Jesus very very sorry Lord I am sorry Lord I am sorry Lord I am sorry Lord I am very very sorry Jehovah I am sorry Lord I am sorry Lord I am sorry as we pray, lift up your hands. You know within you, you can deceive anybody, but you can't deceive God. You can't hide it from Him. You say, God, I've been living, I've been living a life that is not genuine, but I want to genuinely repent today and forsake my old ways. Run out to this place. Lord, I am sorry 
I want to genuinely repent and genuinely follow you. Come forward quickly. It doesn't matter who you are. And it doesn't matter what your position is. Even if you are a bishop, even if you are a pastor. It doesn't matter. I have made you too small in my heart. Oh Lord. Cry to him. Forgive me. Tell him that you have disappointed him. And I have believed in the land that you were unable to help me. But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. Cry to him. Tell him I am sorry. Tell him you are sorry. In my heart. Show yourself strong And you my heart And heal my soul Oh Lord Be magnified Oh Lord Be magnified Be magnified, O oh Lord. Cause you are highly exalted, and there is nothing you can't do, O oh Lord, my eyes. It's not only about you repenting, it's about you saying, God, from today, I am entering a new covenant with you. I will not go back to my vomit anymore. I want to see your glory. Where I am is by your grace. Who I am is by your mercy. Teach me, Lord, that I may know you more. Teach me, Lord, that I may know you more. Oh, where I am now, where I am is by your grace. Who I am, Lord. Who I am is by your mercy. Oh, teach me, Lord, that I may know you more. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, that I may know you more. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and pour your love. You look beyond me. You look beyond me. Just a moment. Stretch for your hands. Say after me. Say, Lord. Lord. I am sorry. I am sorry. For letting you down. For letting you down. I am sorry. I am sorry. For my sins. For my sins. Forgive me. Forgive me. Of a truth. Of a truth. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. A terrible sinner. A terrible sinner. I have sinned. I have sinned. And I have come short of your glory. And I have come short of your glory. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me. For if you, oh Lord. For if, oh Lord. Mark my iniquities. Mark my iniquities. Who can stand? Who can stand? Forgive me. Forgive me. Wash me. Wash me. By the precious blood of Jesus. By the precious blood of Jesus. 
exempt me exempt me from the consequences of my sins from the consequences of my sins by your mercy oh lord by your mercy oh lord my father my father i covenant with you today i covenant with you today that i will serve you that i will serve you genuinely genuinely in truth in truth and in spirit and in spirit i will convert others i will convert others my co-travelers my co-travelers in the journey of sin in the journey of sin i will bring them to you i will bring them to you i will never i will never be converted to them anymore i will never be converted to them anymore i will bring sinners to you i will bring sinners to you show me mercy show me mercy i enter into a new covenant i enter into a new covenant god i will serve you that i will serve you with all my heart with all my heart i will never go back to it again i will never go back to it again so help me lord so help me lord thank you jesus